the things, men not born free of circumstances and situation and hills and mountains and up and down in this world. But if we continue to live, we'll understand there are some things we cannot get out of ourselves. We can't get out. I was noticing the songwriter said, Jesus is all I need. And I noticed what he said, uh, uh, Brother Nick, he, he, he said once he thought he wanted to be a rich man. But he get to the place where he found out none of that matters no more. None. Well, he had to grow into that. Me too. I'm just like you too. I have to grow into this. Praise There's the Lord. a lot of stuff you got to grow into. Oh, yes. We, you know, yes. we are thankful. Thank you, and I don't want to waste this precious time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. I did not drive from South Jersey like that, that hundred mile, you know, at uh, tremendous speed to be here on time. I did not do that. And, uh, <laughs> Mother Martin had called me. Uh, what it was this morning? Was it this morning? It was on our way. And she said, I want to come to church. And you know what? I, I never want to stand in the way of nobody getting to church. Amen. It's part of my servitude. Mm -hmm. Yes. You got to be saved more than just for you yourself. Yes. Amen. God, and God did save us not just for ourselves. Yes. Most people was drawn through the love of the church, and the church was left in charge of to carry out the work of Jesus, what he left them to, because he's a greater work you'll do. My Lord. He's a greater work you'll do. Amen. I understand protocol, but I just want to utilize the time here, okay? Thank you for doing a great job, uh, my wife, Mother Martin, and the Johnsons. God bless you. you. I know you went through some trying time, loss of your brother. So we thank God for that. But there's much work to be done, regardless of what happened in life. We got to still learn. And somehow, I don't know, God put people, and he put the preachers, like you say in Roman, uh, the 10th uh -huh. chapter, say, how can we hear without a preacher? And how can any preacher say we sent? You know, and God sent the preacher. He said, we hear through the preacher, but we're not talking about what people used to call us a jack leg, you know? Uh, people call me Jack Leg unjustly, but I don't pay any attention. I don't buy into that. Mm -hmm. Well, if you'll notice in history, if you've been in church for a while, people call people a lot of things unjustly. Mm -hmm. You'll notice if you turn the TV on and YouTube, you'll see where people demonizing pastors and things, putting things down that aren't true, putting out untrue things about people. Mm -hmm. Amen. But I don't worry about that stuff. So. As long as as long as you got your hand in God's hand, you know, that's what matters. And guess what? It's coming out in the wash eventually. Uh -huh. Want it? Amen. I use that meta metaphorical phrase. I thank God for y'all present here. I want you to look with me because I was looking yesterday and Benton was looking what to preach about, what would be more profitable to preach about. And I try to pick a matter up. So a friend of mine called me, was very enthused. His name is Reverend Cornelius Mudd, called me. And he's, he was feeling good. You know, he's a little on his weather, but he was feeling good. And he told me, he said, preach the word, preach the word. And so, and I already had in mind of that first chapter of the book of Genesis, right? Oh which was stirring me up quite a bit. That first verse, I want you to just look at it with me, please. You all heard it. Some of you can quote it from me. And the King James Bible says, it says that in the beginning, God create the heaven and the earth. Now that's, ma that's major. That's big time. Well, if he created you will have to agree with that second verse. You will have to agree with it. When they say, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was up on the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved up on the face of the earth. And I'm sure you guys, you already know, and any Christian who, uh, you don't have to be a Christian to know that God could do things. You know, it shouldn't amaze you. But what it should do is stir your conscience to get in on it and find out what all this church thing about and what all this Bible stuff about. 
and why people do what they do, why Christians do what they do. Amen. And, you know, because, you know, the word did tell us here, if I be lifted up from the earth, see, I'll draw a man on the day. And in the process, <coughs> you mean, you know, we, we keep learning. Now, what God means, see, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I'm not going all over the Bible. I want to make a couple of points because it stirred me up so much. Uh -huh. It stirred me up. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And it says, see, in the beginning, Lord have mercy. I've been hearing this since I was a kid. Amen. They can almost quote it out of my head. In the beginning. So that word actually jumped out at me. And it said, in the beginning. But look what's what on that. What about the beginning? It said, in the beginning, God. Uh -uh. Glory be to God. How the writer, how did the writer know how to write like this? You know, the first five, four book. It's the book of the law, Moses, a tribute to Moses, Moses' life and how he write, you know. It's in the beginning, God. Mm -hmm. Now, this is amazing. Glory be but God. no one ever told me. Uh, I could never find it nowhere. I could never find when was the beginning. Mm. I, I couldn't find it. I read it. And read on things and whatnot. Read the Bible late at night and everything. But what it does, I think, I don't think God won't even want me to know when was the beginning. Mm. I don't think. And what? I don't think it's necessary for me to know what the beginning is. And the reason why I'm saying this is because uh, to follow God, it got to be done by faith. You got to first. Oh my God, I'm, I was trying not to go there. Go there. But I'm going to have to go. Hebrew, what is it, Hebrew 11? Uh, he, look what Hebrew 11 and 6 says. It obligate me. See, what God does, he'll drag you in places that you didn't intend to go. That's how much, if you submit yourself, Jan 4 and 7, to submit yourself to God and resist the enemy and he'll flee. The enemy don't want you to go there. An old self, we talked about it this morning, wouldn't want you to go there, but you, the Spirit of God, God. I know we sing the song, say, where he leads me, I'll follow. <clears throat> That's tough. It's tough to follow that. Because the old flesh started warning and fighting you and kicking on the outside influence, trying to influence you away from what God want to do for you and show you different things. Oh, you all with me? Let me just pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And yet, I notice something about the word, and I always say that. It's so deep, the scholars can dive in the word, can get in this word, and they won't be able to reach the bottom. It's so much revelation in God's word, all of us put together cannot dig everything out. We can get some references, but still yet it's so deep. I heard somebody say, oh, see, I'm going to preach on that. So and he had the preacher preaching on it. We don't own the word. The word on us if we will let it. You know, the word of God on us if we will submit. It will take us in places that we wouldn't have ordinarily gone. Jeremiah knew that. He said, Lord, I, I, I could have. You the one told me to preach. He said, you told me to preach. And then he went on and even said, Lord, you stronger than me. Well, he is, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Isn't it God stronger than you? Yes, yes sir. If you submit yourself, you will know that he's stronger. Because what, what is it? I, I, I don't want to go all over the Bible. I don't want to know. No. Romans 7 and 14. See, if I do that which I allow not. Now, I hope y'all can catch it with me, please. 
you say, how is pertaining to the text? Well, the Spirit of God will lead you in places and open the text up. That's what it will do. And I don't want to, I don't want to fight against him. He said, I do that which I allow not. It's, I, that's mean what I don't agree with. That's 7 and, what is it, Romans 7 and 14? I, am I right? See, if I do that which I allow not, it's not I to do it. That, that's my sinful nature. So you've got to submit to God. And do I know we talk a lot of things and a lot of religious cliche while we in church, and it's good. You, it makes you feel good, don't it? And sometimes it even makes people shout. And sometimes we shout and we don't really understand the degree of our shouting sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an inspiration sometimes we shout off that don't have much relevance, but it feels good. But according to what I was reading in the Bible, it said, the, what it said, body exercise, profits a little. It, it do. You know, I understand we get excited and we shout. But what get me here yeah, about the text, stir me up. I see, in the beginning, God. God. And what? What God? God create the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. That's proof right there. It's hard to take verse 1 and not pay attention to verse 2. It's because verse... Uh, verse 2 justify verse 1. I'm seeing stuff that I never studied here before. You know? In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form. That's mean nothing was there. My friend told me. And I grabbed it as a text. He made something from nothing. That's what that text is. He made something from nothing. Now, it's amazing, isn't it? Now, here, here what I want to do. I want to see can I execute a little bit of this to, to add my knowledge. Some of you have more knowledge probably than I can. But I'm doing what God, the level of what God give me at. And if I do that, I think it will please him that I did what he told me. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Let me take you to, let me take you to uh, Hebrew to, so we can back up them scripture I just had read that. What a Hebrew 11, okay Hebrew 11 and 3. Now, to receive this that God gives, it got to be faith somewhere, okay, to, to connect you with, see, God creates something from nothing. And the faces you got to have is the substance of thing hope on, the evidence of thing not seen. No, not seen, but it's revealed through the Spirit. See, that's what has to happen. Unless, you know, we'll come to church for nothing. We'll listen and learn our, our outward part of a story and not the inward part. The letter killeth, but the spirit will make, give life. The spirit will give life. See, by it, the elders up here a good report. The elders. Now, the elders, that's mean them people who seek God. And, they are, and they've been seeking God for a little while, and so they're in the Lord. And that's what they follow. They wasn't perfect, but they follow God. And watch this. Watch this now. This is going to say, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more. No, no, the third chapter. The third verse. So now, through faith, we understand that the world were framed by God, by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Now, that's powerful. This one got me. I just had a catastrophic theological collision with the book of Genesis. That verse got me. I had to get out of bed this morning, 4 a.m. I had to. I said, Lord, let me be a little relevant as I speak. Let me be a little relevant. I want to try to. I said, Lord, bring it to me 
enough so I could tell, so share it with someone else. Watch this. See, in the beginning, the beginning is the starting of anything. Now, the problem I had with that, I didn't know when the beginning was. Of course you want to know. This human flesh want to know. Can I, may I help you a little bit? There are some things God ain't going to let you know. He told his disciples that in the book of Acts. When they asked when the kingdom will be restored, he said, that ain't for you to know. See, that left in God's hand. I think that's the first chapter of Acts. Yeah. He says, there are some things are left in God's hand. In other words, you got enough to have. I don't want you to try to create stuff. I want you to just get some of what I already got created. See, that's that's the thing here. If I, y'all ever heard this? Say it take it take uh, what do you think? Six days to mind your own business. I use that in a metaphorical way. Okay. It said take six days to mind your own business, and the other other six to leave the other things alone. What I, I, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm a human being that was born in sin and shaped with iniquity. All I could do. And try to shake off some that residue, that sinful nature that I was born in. And, and it, you ain't got a lot of time. You can play around with it if you want to, but it's not a lot of time. The Bible did tell us about that in the 90s divisional Psalms that uh, it was allotted to man uh, that he got, what, three, three score and ten? And by, if by reason, he will add a little more. And who knows? We don't know that. But the, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, he's awesome. Now, what I'm doing, I want to zero in the God create. Create me and there was nothing. And then there, now it's something all of a sudden. And who can do that? Nobody but God. There's nobody. No one but God. Now, I notice here. God is superlative. What I mean is that God is not relative or comparative. He is infamy and superlative. Yes. Supreme of all. He has no equal. When I keep listening at that verse, it, in the beginning God created. I keep looking for when. When was the beginning? On the right of, in the right of Moses Moses, the writers in the Bible, was very smart. And people argue with me a lot of times. Say, man, write the Bible. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. No, 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 no. Listen. God write, inspired man, inspired man wrote the Bible. And nowhere, no one could write this smart here. That they could coordinate all the different writers, 66, and coordinate that Bible as one book. They all, they're not... They're not, they all correspond with one another. Every book correspond. They all was talking about the same God. So Moses wrote. That's stirring me up. He said, in the beginning. When was the beginning? I understand scientists zero in. I understand that. I know that. But in the beginning, there was a theory. I'm not talking about theory. I don't, I'm not going to talk about the theory too much because God is superlative. Come on back with me a little bit. And I'm almost done. God is not relative or comparative. That's me. Nothing to compare him with. There ain't nobody to compare God with. How many of you ever been in a situation or something ever happened in your life and you see that you know nobody but God could do it? Nobody. And nobody! I was wondering how, when I look at, and you know, it's more than one heaven. You know, and I was wondering how the, how the universe was made and how the universe stayed in place and how did the moon 
and the sun and the earth, these planets never crash into one another. Only God. When I look at that, God, and nobody couldn't make no adjustment nowhere. I heard them talking now, using theory. I don't pay that stuff too much mind. See, man could switch the weather. They can't switch the weather. They wish they could have switched it. I think they do that to stir up. And sometime God will let things come across the air for the Christian to notice. So they got to make sure they know where they're at. You got to make sure you're on solid ground. You got to make sure you're steadfast in God's word. Abounding in God, truth, stretch the word. Do I have anything to compare? Do I have anything to justify the way I live? Yes, I got God's word. This big enough for me here. If I can handle this, this digest a little bit of this. I ain't got to go create nothing else. People, the devil looking to create things to throw snowballs to throw you and I off. Who was born going to church and, and already claimed Christ is your savior and the devil comes along and throws stuff to make you lose doubt but no God will take them Roman 8 and 28 and see we know that all things work together I take that stuff as a stepping stone how many of you when something get in your way when you know that you know that you know you in Christ huh you get on that and step it up Somebody, they talk a lot of time about somebody throwing things on you and throwing goo, but now if nobody can't get nothing in you, you don't have to worry about it. And your faith is in God. You don't have to, what, what is that? Sham boxer, he dance in the dust. So people try to throw stuff around his door and he get in and dance in it. But you got to be sure that you're sure that you're sure that you know who the Lord is. So none of these things can come to you and throw you off track. Once you get on track, you better stay on track. According to what I see here. See, unknowing the God that you say you serve, if that is true. Now, if that is true, you got to place your hope, your faith, and your trust in that almighty God. He's superior. Yeah. He's superior to anything. I don't know no one like him. No one. Uh, the, now the earth spins and it don't seem like it's spinning that fast but it spins it spins at a 6,700 uh, mile per hour and you say well we don't feel it no because the gravity is holding us to the earth the gravity holding us to the earth and that we won't fly off and when God make it listen he, he's perfect Y'all know that God is perfect? You know how I know he's perfect? Look at here. I'm born here and I'm almost 79. Mother Martin is 90 and going on to 91. And, and you check the, uh, ch check the prophets, check the patriarch on how they got the same testimony. When you look at the people in the Faith Hall of Fame, on how they talk, they had these testimony that these things is true. Because they tried in every way. They, they, tried, they were tested and they tried. God come through. Look at Abraham. Come through all the... If you read in that 11th chapter of Hebrew, you'll see what I'm saying. Uh, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. You keep on studying and reading. Only thing that leave us with some doubt is stuff we don't know, not yet. But if you continue in him... You will really become his disciples indeed. Your action. I go by action. Action is louder than words. I don't necessarily go by what you say. I look what you do. I look what you love more. I look what you gravitate toward more. See, you could speak one thing that like Jesus told them. Critical. Uh, uh, what is it? Them, them uh, Pharisees. He said, you speak with your lip, but your heart ain't there. Your heart is far from it. You say one thing, but your actions show me something else. But you got to be grounded in the word. And you got to know that you know that you know. You better, you better know that you know that you know that you know that. Because the devil is come seeking whom 
the, the, the God give uh, the devil permission to do what he did to Job. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes, if we keen enough, God can use us in some strategic way. I told you we are, we are, God allow us to participate in his plan, if we will, and he continue to wait for us. Now, I know, uh, I know there are some people that uh, they would, they would use they would allow the devil to use them to miss their blessing. See, the, the devil will let you think you are legitimate on what you say. Oh, trust me. He'll make you think that you're right and, and he'll give you he'll give you some backup to go with it and make you think you're right. Just to come along that when the day comes, your bubble will be busted. Your bubble will be busted and say, oh, I thought I was right. You ever see people? I thought this was that. Stop starting. Make sure you know that you know. Of course, this, this foundation here is assured. Because the Bible tells me at the beginning, this Bible here, give me the right and give me the will. To, this is the foundation for all the other part of the Bible. Genesis. Because you know why? It, tell, it, it at the start. When you get on the start. Hmm? Mm -hmm. you got to start somewhere. So it's in the beginning, God created heaven. Mm -hmm. I just want to know about that. I can't know it all at once, though. Mm -hmm. I know I'm 79. Before I leave this earth, I want to I wanna know more about it. We could know as much as we can, but we know in parts. We see in part. But man, when, when that which is perfect come, we'll know him in his fullness. Mm -hmm. According to what I was reading in First John 3 and 3. First John 3 and 3. And see the, see the world know us not because they knew him not. And, it's, and the first verse say, Oh, what man of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called his son. Look, look, look how much he love us. We are his son and daughters. He love us so much. Amen. He invite you and I to participate in his plan. Amen. Now that's amazing. And guess what? It don't cost you anything. It's free. You just got to up keep what you get. What you, is a gift he gave you. He just wants you to upkeep it. How do I keep it? Uh, how do I keep it, Brother Gavin? I'll tell you that. By serving him. By doing his will. That's how you polish it. That's how you keep it alive. When you do that, when you trim it, nourish it, it will grow. Yes. Amen. Yes. It'll grow. See, in the beginning, how you how you how you polish it? How you nurture it in the word? Your soul, your spirit inside you has to grow. You can't leave it though, man. The word is your huh? The word is your food. <laughs> Some people say it's food for my soul. See, that was food for my soul. Amen. This is food for my soul. Amen. Then I I can eat the natural. I could eat so much of the natural, it'll make me sick. I could eat so much of the natural until I can't sleep. Right. How many of y'all know that? Amen. You could eat so much natural, but the word of God, you can't eat too much of that. No, you know what it does with you? It heals you. Ah, hallelujah. Yes, yes. The word heals the soul. Yes. It gnashes the soul. Yes. It gives the soul freedom. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. I ain't bound. No longer bound. No more chain holding me. Thank you, God. My soul is resting. How my soul rest? That's mean I'm at peace. Oh, praise the Lord. The word give you peace, don't it? Yes, it does. It do. A free man is something else. And nothing can tie him now. <laughs> Y'all know that? Yeah. Nothing he'll he'll get out. Cause he's free. Mm -hmm. And nothing around him to hold him in. Them fence that the devil put all around you, unbound you, unlimit you, unlimit you. Oh my God, y'all. Ever what revelation you get out of this? Go ahead and get it. Watch this now. But God, God, he made something out of that. That's the God that you and I serve. That's the God that you and I come to church to hear about. That's the God that you and I 
Seth, stable. He's a stabilizer for the human race. Yes. That he made it. He invites you and I yes. into his plan. Yes. He said, oh, oh, Jerusalem, how, how, how much I would have taken you in like a hand and take your little chick under their wing. Yes, but you wouldn't. God wants you. He wants to love, he sh he wants to love you. He, he, the epitome of God is love. So he Amen. invites you. He, he wants you. And you read that scripture here on, I'm not, I can't do all of them today. But he made you look different than he do other things. Amen. He made you in his image. Yes. But if we are made in his image, it don't take so much. Huh? It don't take so much to develop the attitude of seeking him. And not much. You're not far away. We hear a little bit about in there. We hear grandma. We hear granddad. We hear other people. We go different places and we hear different things. It don't take so much. It don't take much. All it takes, according to... Uh, uh, Peter, he told the, the people when they, and when they asked one another, and Peter was listening in Acts 2 and 38, and he asked them, he said, they said, well, they couldn't deny it, because when you tell the truth, you can't deny the truth. You can reject the truth, but you can't deny it. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Amen. He said, tell them 2 and 38, say this, here's the whole mold of becoming a Christian. He said, repent ye, every one of you, for the remission of your sin. Oh and you be baptized in the name of Jesus. In the name. You, I'm telling y'all, it's an ongoing process. Amen. It don't stop there. It's ongoing. I told you, you got to feed it. You got to feed your spirit. And this has got me stirred up. This has got me stirred up. And I saw that. And I don't see nobody else like him. It says he's infinitely superlative. That's mean he don't need nothing else. He don't even need me, but he invite me. Can I can I help y'all? Listen yes. at this. Yes. He, yes. His, 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 he don't have to give me grace. Amen. Don't have to. And nothing said that God has to give me grace. None at all. And nothing said that in the Bible. None at all. Grace is freely given. Oh, thank you. Grace is freely given. I can't do nothing to earn it. Nothing. I can't, I'm, I'm not in a position to even ask for it. Uh, hmm. Jesus. Hmm? Thank you, I ain't in a position to ask. Jesus. Praise the Lord. I ain't in a position to ask for mercy. I'm not in a I, I may ask for it because I know it exists. Because yes. I know I serve God. Yes. I know if I messed up. Yes. I ain't perfect because I'm a Christian. Amen. I messed up, but I can ask him. He's the yes. ask. Yes. Yes. And that's the way in nature. I love him so much, I know he could wipe my sins away. Mm. I know he could restore me. Yes. I know he could restore me from things. Yes. I don't always do the right things. I don't know if anybody here oh. that always done the right thing. But I know I could fall on my knees and ask God. See, he freely do that. I can't make him to give it to me. It's done freely. Listen at me. The prodigal son of y'all recall in Luke. He went away. He defied his father. House and the things. And went away. I'm, I'm still in that. I'm still in the text. I'm still in that text. He made something from nothing. In other words, I didn't have anything to pay for what I done. Can y'all help me a little bit, preaching? Go ahead. I had nothing to pay for what I, the price was too high. I, I had nothing. I look around. I had nothing. I tried to think of something I could make up for my wrong. I could. I had nothing. Ain't nothing I could have. My money couldn't do it. My work, my kindness couldn't do it. It's freely given. According to what I was reading, 3 and 16, John, it said, for God so loved the world that he gave. Oh, my time is out. His only begotten son. That whosoever believe on me 
shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. So he offered me, he gave me an invitation. Thank you. To come sit with him at his table. He gave me that invitation. I'm gonna have to stop. I don't wanna wear y'all, I see the time. But it's much more, I have to do part two or three on this because this is so huge. It's so huge. I told you that, and I look at where I'm at from where I'm at now. You can look from where you at too. He is superlative. He has everything to offer. And I have nothing to give. Let me tell you, all he, all he wanted me to do, participate mm -hmm. in his plan. How do I participate, Gamble? See, all I have to do is say repent. Mm -hmm. Repent, and he'll restore me. God restores people. Yeah. He restores. He said, who, whosoever will, let him come. He, whoever come to him, he said, I will no wise cast you out. God always waiting for us. He's long suffering. He has patience. I understand there's a time in the Bible when you go on in the Revelation. There's a time when all them things will be over. I know that. But he's long suffering. Yeah. His love is like everlasting. Amen. Praise God. But we have to participate in the plan that God has set for us, if we can participate. And we sing a song and say, what God has for me is for me. It's true, but the only question I have about that is say, why you don't have it? It requires. When my mail come, my check could be in there. It requires something for me. Wow. If I got a mailbox sitting over there, it requires me to go to that mailbox and look in there. Even when I don't get it out, it required me to open it, read it, and if that check, for check in there for me, it requires of me to sign that check and go to the bank. It's like that. I'm trying to use little simple <laughs> metaphorical things to go, that check, that money on that check, what it says, is no good to me except I go there and cash it. And then, listen, you got to be so glad when you cash it, can I get a little another nugget that you'll do the right thing with it? Because it was given. Amen. God give us. I better stop here, y'all. But remember what I wanted to say. He made something from nothing. Now, he made me. I wasn't nothing when I find out. I thought I was something. That song that they, they sang. See, once I thought I wanted to be a rich man. But I found out what go up, sugar must come down. Mm -hmm. I'm glad Jesus found me and he brought me around. Because uh -huh. I found out he's all I need. Thank you. He's a friend indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what he is to me. Right. And I got to that point. Yeah. Said, well, Brother Gamma, what is your argument? I'm going to keep on with this argument until I leave this earth. Mm -hmm. That's my argument. That's the preacher argument. Mm-hmm. The preacher got a good argument. It just not many people would buy into that thing. I was trying to now. How big is God? Oh yeah. Unexplainable, undescribable. You can describe him in your word. Uh, in my word, he's water when I'm thirsty. All right now. Yeah. He's a doctor in the sick room. Yeah. He's a bridge for me. Over troubled water. I'm going to tell you all that's for fact. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. You ever had some trouble? Mm -hmm. yes. And the Lord overnight make them go away? Amen. Oh, Amen. So, you ever went to bed worried and you woke up? You were glad. Amen. Somebody Amen. said, he roll all my, wash all my sin away. Mm -hmm. He do. Thank so that's why we are here. And we pray and hope that you get something from the text. It's not all. You never could get it all at one time. I told you it's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. it's, it's ongoing. Amen. Mm. Somebody say sweet honey in the rock. Mm -hmm. See, taste it and see. Mm -hmm. And it's sweeter than the, one the day before. Mm -hmm. You keep tasting it. 
And you keep one more, the story of the baby bear, and I'm done, listen. Baby bear and mother bear. Simple. Mother bear brings some honey home one day from the nest, let baby bear taste it. It tastes so good. When mother bear was out on her errand one day, baby bear remembered that taste. You know what baby bear do? He did not yet know how to look for honey out of them bee nests. So what baby bear did, he couldn't wait till mother bear get home to tell him I want some honey. He said, let me go for some honey on my own because I remember that honey tastes good. He went to the nest and stick his nose in. Y'all know what happened. There was trouble. When mama bear get home, he had welled on him big as a cucumber because he did not yet know how to get. Well, my moral of the story was this. My moral of the story was this. When you taste God's word, it gets better and better if you taste it, mm -hmm. if you understand what you're tasting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. He makes something out of nothing. He make me you. I was nothing one day, and he make me something. We all can attest to that. I was by the wayside. Thank you. Let's stand. I ain't finished, y'all. I feel like preaching now. Oh! Oh, God. Oh, God, we thank you. Thank you for what the Spirit of God done. Thank you for what you brought us to this place. Your people are in here now. Thank you. We feel your presence. Thank you. And with us now, we thank you. But oh God, we got more to come. Oh God. The word is so mighty. It's so powerful. Oh God, we thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you how you talk to us today. We bless your name today. Your people that came to this place. Lord, we pray that you will touch someone if they will. They can come down front if they want to and just, Lord, just, just talk to you a little bit. Lord, bless us in a special way. Move in our heart, mind. Put that running in our feet. Put that clapping in our hands, joy in our soul. Lord, we thank you for this worship service. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everyone say amen. amen. Don't forget. You can help us continue to spread the good news by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's PIBC, Pentecost Inspirational Baptist Church. Like, follow, share, and subscribe. Thank you for joining us. Have a blessed week.